boy, can you please turn on that television? It is TV time, so welcome back. Uh, we've got some very interesting matches today. So let's get right into them and see what people are playing on the TV. Okay, so we have a match, a uh, random noob against Jexico. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that name right, but uh, wrong, sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, random noob opens up with a lumberjack to start things off. Uh, and then we see Jexico pass. Then a random noob uh, coins out a Southport captain, so getting some ramp going for himself, lining them correctly, so the Southport captain has line to castle. I would imagine that he would hit castle here with Southport uh, after this Dwarven Paladin comes out, or Dwarf Paladins comes out, um, and kind of ruins his plans for keeping damage on face. Um, of course, when you're playing against Crusader, it can be tough sometimes, but played an armory, uh, answered with a blue fire bolt, so they negate each other. Uh, freezing pillar here, so random noob looking to freeze this paladin, uh, so that can't get any more heals, and so that he can continue to chip away at castle. But we see a flying books come out to, uh, to take out the Southport captain. So an interesting choice there, instead of using blue fire, he went for that, which is understandable. He wants to look for threats like rat hovel, uh, and be able to deal with them with the blue fire. I'll probably see a double Dwarf Paladin come out to clear this Freezing Pillar. Yes, we do. Well, at least we see one of them. Uh, okay, there's the second one. So yeah, both of them coming out to freeze the, to get rid of the Frozen Pillar here. Um, leaving Lightning Blade potential? No, a Mordok's going to come out instead. So the Mordok probably going to be played aggressively, I would imagine. Yep, he's going to go up to face. We'll probably see the Fear in hand come out to, uh, to Fear that back. Uh, yes, we do. So next turn, um, Random should be looking to play that aggressively. The Golem comes out. He's going to trade in two Paladins into that uh, Southport Captain there. So not the best trade for him. We see an Armory come down. I don't like that Mordok placement. Uh, he should have been pushing that aggressively, even if the Golem is going to get awakened. Um, because, of course, you're playing against Warlock, which means burn is definitely a, uh, a thing that can happen to you. So we do see the Drain Life come down, leaving the Mordok at 3 health, which means Dragon's Fire will clear it. Uh, we see an Onslaught go down on the Paladin, a Lumberjack coming out. And not even playing the Mordok aggressively now. You're not going to get that much value out of it unless you run Scope, uh, which I don't think Random Noob does. We see the Dragon's Fire goes down as predicted, uh, and he's going to push up the Golm here. So we see a rally come out. Maybe random is going to follow, I would imagine. Uh, so he's going to trade in. Yeah, he's trading in all the peasants. That smells like a reanimate. Yes, we see the reanimate. And a wraith and two, um, two, two of the banshees coming out. Okay, so interesting card pulls here. We get a blessing and we get a heal with draw. So that's like some of the best pulls he could have gotten. Uh, he did leave it so that the um, the Paladin could get heal on Castle, which I don't really like, um, because you could have just put positioned it one to the side, and that would have been technically the same thing, uh, the, uh, the Wraith, that is. Um, but you know what? It did happen, so it's fine. Uh, we're probably going to see not an Arbiter's come out. He's going to need that for the heals, but we'll see a Lumber come out. He's going to save the Dragon's Fire as well, which makes sense. Uh, so, a Freezing Pillar coming down from Random Noob here. Excellent move. I don't like that he traded in the, uh, the Dragon, because now that puts it in Dragon's Fire range. Um, and the Lumber was going to be frozen anyway, so I'm not too sure about that move, but, uh, but the rest of it is very well done. So we see an Awaken go down on the Golm, a Dragon's Fire go down as said. That's going to clear it. He's probably hoping for the Salhar Last Will to go on to the Wraith, but we don't see that happen. So we'll probably see a Blessing go down on the Wraith, and we'll see that hit face most likely. Blacksmith coming down as well, just increasing the damage. He had the Blessing, there it goes. Uh, so now he's going to hit face with that, trying to get that damage in. We do see in Jexico's hand here, he does have two Arbiters, which means... That's a, that's a pretty good solution to all of his damage going down on face. He'll probably use an Arbiter to clear the Wraith, because that's ongoing damage, I would imagine. Yeah, okay, so he plays in the back, he goes cleans up the Wraith with it. Uh, that's going to be a pass back to Random Noob here. Uh, so, looking to prolong the match, I don't really see Jexico coming back from this. I mean, maybe, but okay, the next, that basically seals it. 
So he's got another temple down, which means that he's going to be able to chain over and over again into castle with this big golem, and then the golem is going to die. Um, I'm not too sure about using the, the frozen pillar side rat to do that. I would have used the one up at the top just to bait something into the freezing pillar if he has something like a Kraxus. Um, because now if a Kraxus came down from Jexico, then the uh, the rat on the top could be dealt with very easily and the Kraxus wouldn't even be frozen. So I'm not too sure about that move. But of course, Jexico did not have a, uh, a... Uh, Kraxus. That's the word I'm looking for, Kraxus. F f words with beastly, trying to find them. It's important. Uh, here we'll probably see an Arbiter's go for castle, I would imagine. So using this uh, this Tarius to clean up the bottom rat, and then Arbiter being hit on castle, just to lower the, uh, the health down a little bit there, because only one rat is incoming, which is four damage. Um, so that's pretty hand... Pre pretty easy to handle. Oh, and you have the, uh, the Lumberjack as well. Uh, even if that gets frozen, it's very good to body block with. Uh, so excellent move there from Jexico. Okay, so looking more reasonable now for him, he might even be able to bring this back with that Dragon's Fire draw. Uh, because now he can deal with all the swarm that, uh, that random noob is putting out. So I would imagine Dragon's Fire Priest would go down here. Um... We see a reinforce come into hand as well. So we main decks reinforce, which is interesting. I believe this is an Inferno deck uh, for Jexico. So he runs all of the Inferno buildings, I think. And then he can use like reinforce on them. It's actually quite an interesting combination. But he chooses to get rid of Pillar there and then move up. It's interesting that he's doing that when Random Noob could mm, racking Mystic Journey and clear both of them. I guess he wants the aggressiveness there. We're going to see a Yenroth come down. Um, so here, the play I would like to see is a Fear on the Yenneroth, a Reinforce on the Castle, just to get the draw cycle going and see what you get out of that. I don't really see other options, so yeah, both Reen- okay, it's interesting that he chose to play the Golem there first, and then Blue Fire. Okay, I guess he's not going for the Heelong Castle, which I don't really agree with, because a Racking Mystic Lightning Blade would just end the game for you right there. Um, I would have definitely gone for the Castle instead of going for the Unit. Uh, but, I mean, I guess it makes sense to take that gamble, uh, especially when you could draw, like, another Arbiter or something like that, um, to help clean up the game, and having units down will help you there. So, yeah, all of the Inferno coming into his hand at once here, uh, the Tarius helping him cycle through some of the draw, he's gonna have to play that in front, um, just to stop the... Yenroth from being able to hit face, and that's very effective actually not getting him to hit face, because now, if Random Noob wants to hit face, he has to move the Yenroth to get rid of that pillar first, uh, because he can't get rid of it without, unless he has enough chain, uh, which I don't imagine he does. Maybe he could have actually done it. You know what? If he had... I... I think he could have... Yeah, he definitely could have gotten rid of that. Okay. Now I'm a little bit confused. So, maybe not. Okay, never mind. My math is a little bit off. But we have lethal here for Jexico. If he does lumber into rat. And then, no, don't play. Oh, dear. He's missed it. Uh, what I was going to say is lumber into rat. Then uh, the golem into the uh, soldier. And then he can play the... Arbiters and then hit castle and that would put random noob down to one and then random noob would have lost the game there But he missed it uh, So I think we're gonna see this game go to random noob here. I don't really see Jexico coming back He's used all three of his arbiters here um, I just think that's gonna be it. Yeah, there's not really anything he can do Especially with no units on the board all of the swarm coming in that big boy Yenneroth there. So he uh, he thumbled the the Arbiters, uh, when he could have had game with that. But you know what, these things do happen. Uh, people make mistakes sometimes. It's just something you gotta, you gotta learn from and move forward from. Uh, and a very close game nonetheless. Uh, just could have closed it out a little bit earlier there. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's quite the interesting game there. Yeah, he's gonna try to trade in with this Yenroth, but... You can get rid of it, but you can't get rid of all of the other things coming. It's interesting Mordok positioning there. I don't really agree with that. But Random Noob does take the game. He Vesa Mel taking on Victory Snipe here. And of course, Vesa is infinite um, for his 
gameplay of dragons. He's quite the dragons player. Uh, so I would imagine with that uh, that opening turn, he's going to now play the temple. Yeah, that makes sense. He's got the double dragon search in hand. Um, so lumberjack uh, moving up to take chip, and then a hovel going down. Um, I would imagine. Okay, I was going to say double dragon search, but I guess the uh, the um, secret dragon makes sense because he can play the shadow drake and then have that secret dragon next turn. Um, okay, never mind. With the Lumberjack moving up, that possibility is gone now. Uh, but he will play the Shadow Drake. Now I can use it to clean up even more units before getting the, uh, the Secret Dragon out. Uh, so we'll see what Victory does here. He did put down a... Oh, he's setting up. Oh, dear. Okay, that probably is a Craxis next turn. Um, so he's setting up the school. So, of course, uh, obviously a school deck being played here. We'll see if he has the Craxis. To go along with all of this gold that he's just uh, gotten himself. Uh, no mercenary execution going out on the green drake instead. Uh, then we'll probably see yeah, the secret dragon get triggered. Um, not too shabby. He high rolled the green drake there. So Vesa uh, looking very strong here. I wouldn't secret dragon. Uh, sorry, not secret. What am I saying? I wouldn't dragon training just yet. Yeah, you want to get down kind of more of your uh, your dragons. From your hand here, um, he can probably dragon search next turn, then secret, uh, sorry, dragon training. Uh, hope for a three drop out of the uh, the dragon search. I mean, he can always not uh, dragon search in the end, but we'll see what happens here. You got both of these beefy uh, green drake boys, um, so he's gonna victory is gonna play a merchant. Um, hmm, interesting. Interesting. So the dragon training going down there because he can play both the green drake and the ice drake. So Vesa is going to take more of a defensive stance. He's looking for an Aeroth here, obviously, uh, to uh, to help him close out the game. He does have lethal uh, with that face of the dragon multi strike on this first. Okay, he just lost the lethal um, from the mercenary's execution, but he could have like secret dragon, um, sorry, face of the dragon, and then multi strike on castle there. Uh, by cleaning out both of the rats in front of it, but he's lost that possibility now. We're going to see a face of the dragon go down, maybe looking to stop the draw from uh, the school. No, he's looking to take chip on castle. Okay, so he's just gotten the castle down to seven. Quite interesting. And he chose not to move the dragon back afterwards, which is also very interesting. And he chose not to move the dragon that has one health, uh, so that the rat could chip it. So all very interesting plays. Um, not really working out for him, seeing as another school went down. Now everything's getting traded and all of his dragons are dying. Looking at this board, I don't really see him coming back. Like, that's a lot of, lot of infrastructure for Victory Snipe here. I don't really see how Vesa is gonna, gonna turn this around. So we're going to see all of his dragons go down, probably looking for an Aeroth to close out the game. Uh, but he is, of course, looking to take out that church. Uh, he doesn't want that heal continuing on. Now, Victory Snipe getting a lot of rats every turn, a Paladin going down. Not caring about the flying, it looks like. He's not putting a unit behind that, so quite interesting. I guess afraid of chain. Uh, but we'll probably see the Ice Drake come in and clean up that church. We do. Then we see... Everything getting shifted around, moved around. Um, looking like he wants to set up for a chain if he gets Lightning Blade with that Ice Drake to take out a lot of that building infrastructure there. Um, but we'll see. Maybe Victory Snipe has the uh, the Dagger Storm. Um, that would be pretty heartbreaking. Oh, Mercenary's Execution. A more expensive way, but he still removes it. So no building removal here. We see the Lumberjack and the close-up Cloak of Ice combination. He's going to choose to trade the Lumberjack instead of Cloak of Icing it. Gets another Lumberjack. Going to go ahead and trade that one as well. Another lo No, he gets the Stone Drake statue. It would be kind of funny if he got another Lumberjack. I'm not sure if he used one already this game. Um, but yeah, two Lumberjacks being used in that turn there. So we see... It's interesting that he didn't choose to push that Fire Drake up uh, to the middle square in front of his castle, well, two squares in front of his castle, because then he could have done some uh, some lightning blade chain shenanigans with the explosion. Uh, oh, there's the third lumberjack, so he does he does run three. Um, so he's going to go ahead and trade that with the rat. Gets another uh, stone dragon statue uh, with the shadow drake. 
So the free is going to continue on. He's going to get out of the Dremel Sway. If Victory Snipe runs Scope here, that's pretty much, yeah, that would just be game over, but it doesn't look like he does. So no scope for the Dremoth here. It looks like he's going to hold it back a little bit. I would like to see the Dremoth get pushed up. He doesn't push it up. That's really not the uh, the aggressiveness that you want to see. Oh, Yarm is going to be devast- Oh, dear. That's a lot of chain. Oh, no. That's a lot of damage. Jeez, Okay. Well, we got a uh, we got a lot of damage coming in there, so just just board clear, you know, nothing nothing too big, just all of that infrastructure gone from one yarm and being overly aggressive with the uh, the smaller units and not being aggressive enough with the bigger units. So, victory snipe not looking to be in a very good place, especially since we know all base is looking for is just an Aeroth, and then he can close out the game if Victory doesn't guard his castle here, which he doesn't. He leaves it wide open. Uh, we'll probably see the Aeroth come to punish him here. Stone Drake, Aeroth, there we go. That's game over. Uh, that's 10 damage on castle right there. Uh, so, a, a very unlikely comeback there for Vesa. <laughs> that's uh, that's quite impressive on his part. That's uh, that's quite quite the game. Uh, but of course, Victory uh, putting up a very, very good fight there. Um, just in the end, that Yarm was devastating. So excellent game on both of their parts. All right, we have I Roberts taking on Vaseven here. A Lumberjack going down for I Roberts. Uh, Vaseven on his turn is going to do nothing. Uh, I Roberts looking to ninja training something. He gets the swiftness out of it. So ninja training kind of being useless. Um, but, uh, we see Vaseven put down a Dwarven Miner, uh, multi-strike coming into I. Roberts' hands here. He's going to swiftness the Lumberjack, pulling himself another Lumberjack, so very good pull on his part. Uh, he's going to move the swiftness Lumberjack back one and move the normal one up one, which is good because they can both reach Castle if he does manage to trade out with the Dwarven Miner here. But a Flying Book's going down for Vaseven here after he trades, uh, with one of the, um... Lumberjacks. Okay, we see, oh, a very smart play on Robert's part. He's going to play the Wolf, and then he's going to give it Rage, and he's going to give it First Strike and Speed, so we can clean up both of these units. That's a 3 for 2 trade uh, right there, uh, but he keeps the unit out of it. Uh, we'll see if Face Event has a response. Blue Fireball making it 3 for 3, so a very even game so far in the beginning here. Uh, but we will see a Call for Aid go down from Robert's. And some chip on Vaseven's castle here. Uh, so we'll see how Vaseven responds. He's going to meddle into a Tyrannosaur. Uh, so looking to run the dinos, it looks like. Uh, I would imagine we would see Northland's Ranger go directly on fr in front of... Ca no, don't put it there. So what this means is now Vaseven can literally just move a Tyrannosaurus up and then fear it to the back of the castle. If he had put it directly in front of castle, that fear wouldn't have happened, and he would have had access to those Tyrannosaurus. I think that's probably going to lose him the game, especially with the positioning there. I would have liked to see the Northland's Wolf go in first to hit the T-Rex, and then the uh, the Ranger go in to finish it off, so that that fear didn't activate, but we didn't see that. Uh, now Vaseven has uh, some board positioning here, and I. Roberts is not in the best spot to control the board. Vaseman definitely has control of that uh, due to that fear from the T-Rex. Again, a lot of people aren't used to fear aura, so it's understandable that I. Roberts wouldn't really know uh, how to deal with this card. Oh, we see a dinosaur nest come out. That's that's just big. Um, and the, the the explosion from okay twelve. Oh dear. Oh no, that's a lot of baby dinos, a lot of dino buff. Uh, dinosaur Nest also heals your dino um, when you play it. So like if Vaseman played Dinosaur Nest right now, that T-Rex would be healed up to full. Um, of course it's dead this turn, but if he had a Dinosaur Nest uh, and one of his dinosaurs was damaged, it would just heal it up to full, plus give it the buff. And we see I, Robert, surrender here. So Vaseman uh, coming through very, very strongly with the dinos there. The Fear Aura really carrying the match for him there, uh, but an excellent match nonetheless. And with that final match, we'll wrap up the video there. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'm doing my best to keep the content coming. I'm really enjoying making this content, so you know, leave a like if you enjoy, and uh, and always leave a comment if you uh, if you have something interesting to say. 
Uh, but we'll leave it there, and I will see you guys in the next video.